Hello and welcome to Friday Message. One of the things that has come out of this past year has been our recognition of the value and abundance of resources that are available online. Uh, we just look at our own church's website and the wonderful things, the wonderful resources that are available there and resources from other places and from other people. Um, somebody that I uh, deeply admire and have followed for some time is Father Richard Rohr, a Franciscan Roman Catholic Franciscan priest who is the founder of the Center for Action and Contemplation. And one of the resources that they provide is a daily reflection meditation. And I want to share one that uh, I came across recently. It's, it's about love, and it really struck home with me. It really struck a chord. So Richard Rohr says this, Love is who you are. When you don't live according to love, you are outside of being. You're not being real. When you love, you are acting according to your deepest being, your deepest truth. You are operating according to your dignity. Drawing from my many years of teaching, I can honestly say that the most powerful, most needed, and most essential teaching is always about love. Love is our foundation and our destiny. It is where we come from, and where we're headed. As St. Paul famously says, so faith, hope, and love remain, but the greatest of these is love. God's love is planted inside each of us as the Holy Spirit, who, according to Jesus, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Love is who you are. All I can do is remind you of what you already know deep within your true self and invite you to live connected to this source. The first letter of John reminds us, God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in her or him. The creation story in Genesis says we were created in the very image and likeness of God, who is love. Out of the Trinity's generative, loving relationship, creation takes form, mirroring its creator. If we are truly created in the image and likeness of God, then our family of origin is divine. We were created by a loving God to be love in the world. We must overcome the illusion of separateness. It is the primary task of religion to communicate not worthiness, but union. I want to repeat those last couple lines because they're really important. We were created by a loving God to be love in the world. We must all overcome the illusion of separateness. It is the primary task of religion to communicate not worthiness, but union. Union. When I think about that word union and God calling us to union, I think about Jesus' table fellowship. One of the things that Jesus did in his life and ministry was he ate meals with all kinds of people. Sometimes he got in trouble for his table fellowship. And in those resurrection appearances in the Gospel of Luke, we hear about Jesus' table fellowship once again. That marvelous story of the road to Emmaus, those two dejected disciples leaving Jerusalem and heading off and a stranger coming and walking with them and explaining things about Jesus and what had happened to him, to these two disciples, and then, and then they stop, and he seems like he's going to be going along, and they say, no, 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 stay with us. And they see him in the breaking of the bread. 
They see him in the meal when Jesus takes the bread and blesses and breaks it and shares it with them. Their hearts go from broken to burning and they go running back to their fellow disciples to say, he's alive and he's with us in the breaking of the bread. He's with us in the meal. We have union with him in that meal. And then in this Sunday's gospel, they come back and they're in the room with the other disciples and Jesus comes, appears to them and says, peace be with you. And he says, and he says feel me, touch me, see, see my wounds, see that I'm real, that I'm flesh and blood. And then he says, do you have anything to eat? Do you have anything to eat? Again, sharing food with his disciples. It brings them together in union. And of course, we, in our Eucharist, when we gather together, we have union, we have communion with God and one another at this table, at this altar, when we gather together. Union with God, created by a loving God to be love in the world. That's, that's what we celebrate when we come together to celebrate the Eucharist. That's what we go forth to live in lives of love and service. Let's pray together. God, lover of life, God, lover of our souls, God, lover of all that exists, May we live in your love. May we never doubt this love. May we know that we are love, that we were created for love, that we are a reflection of you, that you, lo you love yourself in us, and therefore we are perfectly lovable. May we never doubt this deep and abiding and perfect goodness. We are because you are. Amen. And that prayer was from Richard Rohr as well. A couple of announcements. Uh, just a reminder, you probably already know this, but just a reminder that we are having services 5 o'clock Saturday, 8 and 10.30 on Sunday. All of our services are indoors now. You can register online or by calling the office. Sunday, April 25th, there will be a shell and rock painting event here at church from 3 to 5. Keep your eye on the Friday brief and the Sunday bulletin for details about the shell and rock painting event on Sunday, April 25th. And we are still in need of ushers and Shell Point bus drivers. If you are able to uh, volunteer for either of those ministries, please contact the office and let Susan know. Be safe and well, and God bless you.